Hey guys, welcome to Journey Through the Bible. I am literally excited to be sharing the Word of God with you because the Word of God is our shield and our protector. We are told in the book of Ephesians to have always the full armor of God. And you know, one of the parts or one of the components that we are to put on as the armor of God is the Word of God, which is the sword of the Spirit. Now, that's not to say that the other elements are not important. You still need to have the helmet of salvation. You still need to have the shield of faith. You still need to have the breastplate of uh, the, the breastplate of righteousness. You still have to have your shoes, uh, your, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of, pe- of peace. You still need to pray always and all supplication. But do not forget the word of God, because it is by the word of God that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, defeated the devil when he was tempted. And for every temptation, Jesus Christ answered, it is written. And today we just want to dive into the word as we are in Genesis chapter 30. And I thank God for the progress we've made thus far. You can check out the previous videos we've done on the Bible. A chapter at a time is our theme. And as we explore these themes, I pray that God would have impressed the truths in your heart. And so before we even continue any further, uh, let's pray and ask God for his guidance as we study his word. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your truth. Holy and righteous Father, we thank you so much for your word. Your words are a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path. Without your word, Lord, we would be lost. And so thank you so much for your word as revealed in your holy scriptures, the Old and New Testament. And today as we look at Genesis chapter 30, I pray, Lord, that you would teach us something of your character. That you would teach us something about how we ought to live our lives as people who trust in you as people who are learning to trust in you. Father, thank you so much for who you are and for what you have done. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are in Genesis chapter 30. And in Genesis chapter 30, we find this strange phrase. Give me children or else I die. How striking the sentiment though. How different the attitude of that statement as compared to our modern day age, where we abort 50 million babies each and every year and have mastered the art or science of contraception. Today we think as though children may be our burden, but when you read the Bible, the Bible paints a different picture. It's different from this school of thought of thinking that children are a burden. In the Bible, we are told, children are an heritage from the Lord. And guess what? God is the one in charge of birth control. Now, back to Genesis chapter 30. Although what Rachel is saying here or asking for is pure and good, her motive is outright evil. Listen to what she says in Genesis chapter 30 verse 1. It says here, And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. That statement alone just tells us what's going on in the mind of Rachel. Rachel was motivated by envy and jealousy. Rachel was not satisfied to be Jacob's favorite wife. The wife that he worked for, for an additional of other seven years. And to Jacob, of course, it was just like days because he loved Rachel so much. But Rachel was not satisfied with all these privileges until she had exactly what her sister had. And that's the funny thing about envy, isn't it? Envy envy is grieving someone else's good. How cruel, right? And how how ridiculous as well. <laughs> and really, this is the vilest human emotion. Jedidiah says in Proverbs 27 verse 4, Wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous. But who is able to stand before envy? 
Envy is a great disease. Envy is the reason why Lucifer was uh, was chased, chased from heaven or rebelled because Lucifer wants to be like God. He he he's not satisfied until he is like God. He's not content with who he is. And so the statement of Rachel reveals to us the lack of her dependence on God. She thought like most of us that birth control is the prerogative of man. It's something that we do, right? But Jacob's answer is very important in that it provides an insight into what happens beyond the bounds or the boundaries of biology. We read that Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel, and he said, "Am I in God's stead who hath withheld thee the fruit of the womb?" The Bible is clear on who has the power of birth. Birth is not something we do. You can make love, but does that does never guarantee that you can create life. Only God is the source of life. But for us to capture the full picture, we just need to move a tad bit to the previous chapter, uh, which is chapter 29. In verse 30 we are told, Jacob went in also unto Rachel and he loved also Rachel more than Leah and served with him yet another seven other years interesting right when you read verse 31 he says and when the lord saw that Leah was hated he opened her womb but Rachel was barren so from these verses we gather that uh, god intervenes in Jacob's marriage for a reason it, does, it just doesn't happen impromptuly god intervened because leia was hated that's why the bible says now that word hate doesn't mean that jacob passionately disliked leia because the verse said he loved rachel more than leia which means there was some love left for leia right jacob loved leia less but that's the thing in revelation we are told of the church of Ephesus that has forsaken the first love the church of Ephesus is not reproved for having no love at all but it's it's reproved for having less love but that's a topic for another day in any case we see that god is not far removed from the affairs of men literally And so we read that Leah conceived and bore a son and she called his name Reuben for she said surely the Lord hath looked upon my affliction therefore my husband will love me after that we see that she bears Simeon Levi and Judah and here's a common thing with all these three kids or let's say three experiences is that in all these three Leah praises God it it, it is a direct answer of God's prayer who intervened and answered these prayers so you can only imagine why Rachel was so jealous you are the favored wife of this husband but you cannot bring forth children and in those days like we've seen children were a big deal it's not like today they valued human life but even more so the life of a child She was so jealous to the point where she did what Sarah had previously done. She gave her maid, which a maid is really a, a female servant. She gives this maid to Jacob so that through this maid she may have children. The logic sounds interesting, right? That that's a level of jealousy, but also that's a level of desperate desperate need or want for children. And we see here that Envy is very ambitious, right? And here's what's funny. When she bears the first son, it's not funny but it's kind of confusing. When she bears the first son, Rachel attributes it to God. And she says, "God hath judged me and hath also heard my voice and hath given me a son, therefore called she his name Dan." Now, I think I'm still studying this. You can help me as Bible students, but That the it doesn't seem to show any direct confirmation from God that 
that God is the one who answered this prayer, which makes me ask myself, who really answered Rachel's prayer? Was it God or was it her works? Very, sometimes we can literally answer our own prayers and just attribute it to God. But I guess we can still study. Let me know what you think in the comments and what the Lord has revealed to you in your study. But it gets very interesting in verse number 9. In verse number 9, we see Leah turning to the same methods that her sister was using, which is very concerning now. It seems as though now she's being motivated by the same spirit. We read that when Leah saw, interesting, right? When Leah saw, just like in the previous, when Rachel saw that she had no children. Here now, when Leah saw that she had left bearing, Sometimes we look at ourselves and we look at our insufficiency and efficiency that, that is fully fulfilled in other people. And when we look at ourselves, we envy them. Well, but here it says, when Leah saw that she had left bearing, she took Zilpah, her maid, and gave her to Jacob to wife. This is so confusing. The man now has four wives, in a sense. And Leah bears through Zilpah, Gad, and Asha. And now the names of the children now start to change. Before we saw children that were praising God, but now the names are now reflecting something else. It's more self-centered. It's more the Lord. Uh, now I will be made. Uh, now I will be. I will be. There's that eye effect that pops in. All right, and so we see this continuous tug of war between these two sisters the 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 tug of war is so deep that they began they begin to literally compete for jacob one day when reuben who is leah's son was was about five years old or four years old he went to a wheat harvest right and he found mandrakes in the field mandrakes are very important as we will see now the scientific name for mandrakes is Mandragora venalis. You can look this up. It's an interesting plant. It's supposed today to be a fruit that promotes, in um, among many things, fruitness of the womb. It has something to do with uh, reproduction in a sense. So when Rachel saw Reuben with these mandrakes, she desired to partake of them. The reason is not given, but mandrakes are very interesting. Then Rachel said to Leah, Please, can I, can I have some of those mandrakes? Can I have your son's mandrakes? And, and, and her response, Leah's response is really interesting. Leah says, and she said unto her, Is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband? And, and wouldst thou take away my son's mandrakes also? Wow, right? She had literally, there's this tug of war between uh, Rachel and Leah. And Rachel said, Therefore he said, uh, uh, he says here, and Rachel said, Therefore he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's main drinks. Wow. Wow. Verse 16 of, uh, of Genesis 30. And Jacob came out of the field in the evening and went out to meet him and said, Thou must come in unto me, for surely I have hired thee with my son's main drinks. And he lay with her that night. That's very interesting, right? You're probably like, wow, what's happening here? Is this still the Bible? Yes, it's still the Bible. And the Bible sheds all light to all stories as they happened. So that we may look at them and learn from these mistakes. Now, what's more wow, wasn't Leah's desire just to be with Jacob? This goes beyond just sexual intimacy. But we see in Rachel and Leah as well, a deep desire to have children. What explains this deep desire to have children, despite, uh, besides the fact that they, they valued human life? Well, this deep desire to have children is explained from Genesis 3.15. So they had this hope. All right, they had this hope that having that they would have a share in the blessing of Abraham by bringing forth him in whom all nations of the earth were to be blessed. In many ways, though not this family planning was was motivated by 
uh, was was motivated by the promised seed of Genesis 3 verse 15. God had promised that through thy seed Abraham all the nations of the earth will be blessed. So you can imagine Leah understood this, uh, uh, Rachel understood these promises, Jacob must have told them these things because Jacob was blessed and so they wanted to be, to have children that will partake in this glorious event when, when Jesus Christ himself would be the one in whom all nations of the earth will be blessed. And isn't it amazing that we let her learn that Jesus Christ came forth from one of these, uh, one of these children. This idea is actually proved in the following verse, which says, And God hearkened unto Leah, and she conceived and bare Jacob the fifth son. That's verse 17 of Genesis 30. And Issachar, Zebulon, and Dina or Dinah are born. And also, 22 it says, And God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened to her, and opened her womb, and Rachel bore Joseph. So we see that God is involved, intricately involved in the affairs of these people. But why was God interested anyways? Well, the thing that I'm learning so far, the thing we can take away, is that God is a God of justice. Leah was less loved, God had to intervene. God had to do something to bring everything back in balance, and he did it because God is a God of justice. And so when Joseph was born, it was at the end of the 14 years that uh, Jacob had to labor for the two wives because she was told to fulfill the week of Rachel also, which was another seven years. Now it's 14, it's done. She, I mean, uh, everything is good. And so we see that he says to his master Laban, Give me my wives and my children, for whom I have served thee, and let me go. For thou knowest my service which I have done thee. Now, now, this is amazing. If you compare these two statements, if you compare Jacob's request, what Jacob says, and what Rachel says, it just blows your mind. Rachel is saying, give me children or else I die. There's this sense of, I deserve it. It's mine. Even though she doesn't really deserve anything in that case because she doesn't. Children are a gift of God, not a gift of Jacob. But in Jacob, we see a different story. She, I mean, Jacob is almost asking for the same thing, but now in a proper way. Jacob simply asks for what is his. Jacob only asked for this because it was the will of God that he should be provided from it. He referred to his, he referred his cause to God rather than to agree with the wages, stated wages with Laban, whose selfishness was great. And in the next episode, we're going to talk about Laban's selfishness and look at this man Laban and what he's doing here. And so we, we are to be we must never approach life as though we deserve it. And that's the thing we take away in this whole story. We don't deserve anything, literally. We should only ever always depend on God and live everything in his hands. And Jacob is a great illustration of, of Jesus Christ. He, he doesn't force it. He asks for what is his. Uh, you read the story of the children of Israel and 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 Pharaoh and God saying, Pharaoh, let my people go, right? Similar story here. Maybe let's make a spiritual application right here. See, you are God's, you are his child. Not only are you God's child, but you are also God's wife. Like we've been learning in, in, uh, in the previous episodes that God treats his church as a wife. But sometimes we find ourselves trapped in Laban's place, or I should call it. We find ourselves trapped in Laban's deception and trickery, like how Laban tricked Jacob. But Jesus Christ simply says, give me what is mine that I may go. And really, I think it shows how God loves us. It shows that God cares for us, like, especially when I look at the story of Pharaoh. And really, the children of Israel is another way of saying Jacob, because they are the children of Jacob, literally Jacob. And God is saying, let Jacob go. 
And I think for a long time, God wants his people to be set free. He wants us to be set free from sin, from any bondage around us. But also he wants us to be with him. Like you say, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in the Father. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But now I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. And so it's about time that we should thank God for his love to let us out of, out of bondage, out of the house of bondage. God is the only one that takes us out of bondage. But also the bigger lesson, let's not forget, that we learn today is that we don't deserve anything. We cannot have this attitude that says, give me children or else I die. We can't. We don't deserve even God's salvation. We don't deserve anything. And so we have to, you know, approach God, approach the things of the Bible, spiritual things, with humility, like Jacob did. And, and only claim promises that we know we have met the conditions.